You ever think to yourself, man, I wish my life looked more like the movies? You know, where the underdog character emerges as the champion and goes on to live their amazing dream life where everything is super amazing all the time, where there's epic soundtracks and movie montages where everyone is just dancing. Like, wouldn't that be amazing? And now I know what you're gonna say, Kevin, it's obvious that movies aren't real. They've got soundtracks and all the boring parts are taken out. We're adults, we know that movies aren't real. And yeah, I get that, but whether we realize it or not, the vast majority of us have structured our entire lives around chasing this Hollywood dream life. Our society praises the externalities of a dream life because that's honestly what sells. And we're constantly chasing that next thing that we're hoping somehow makes us happy. We think that one day when I finally get the thing, I can finally rest and enjoy my dream life. But upon closer inspection, we're not really in search of a specific thing that we're after. We're in search of that feeling that it gives us. We want to feel like we've made it. We want to feel like we're successful. I always thought someday in the future, you know, this switch would flip and my life would go from being this regular mundane existence where maybe the house is sometimes too cold or the snack drawer a little bit too boring or my life a little uneventful to this existence where suddenly everything was amazing. A life where things are just, you know, better. And recently all this has been on my mind as someone I know ended up in the hospital and we didn't know if they would make it or not. And it's times like these that really make you start to think and reevaluate life. When confronted with death as this reality to contend with, not as some theoretical concept, it made me realize that this dream life that we're really chasing is kind of like this dessert we're saving room for at the end of a meal. We're so focused on one day getting a taste of this magical ice cream that we're hurrying through this delicious steak dinner that's sitting right in front of us. We're so distracted thinking about the future that we completely forget to enjoy what we have right here. And it's realizations, like, have you ever realized how delicious oranges are? You know, not these packaged foods that we all go crazy for, but just the simplest things, like oranges. I don't know why I'm going on about oranges, but <laughs> just the simple things. Or savored the, the weird telltale laugh of a good friend or family member. Like when my brother and I, we just kind of like dork around with each other. Kind of give each other this stupid look that's like, Yo, what's up? <laughs> I, I, it's just so weird to do it on camera. It's just something that happens in the moment. It's things like that that I used to take for granted. But when you realize that you're not going to have all this stuff forever, it really allows you to linger in that moment and just suck all the juices out of it, you know? And you start to see everything a lot differently. There's a special gratitude to be found in those moments. A kind of quiet awe that says, oh my God, I guess I actually really do enjoy my life. My regular, boring, mundane life. This is pretty freaking sweet. And with those new eyes, we have the choice to choose for ourselves what is worth appreciating to make up our own minds about what a dream life looks like. Like in my case, I used to live my life for these external accomplishments. And I would do things because they would make for a good story that I could tell people or give me a nice little bit of prestige that I could, you know, carry around. But I realized it was like me spending my entire life doing something that I didn't really want to do for its own sake, just to get this little plaque that I'd put on the wall so that everyone would see, you know, and realize that everyone's too busy to even look at it. I think we have to be honest when we're trying to define our dream life for ourselves. You know, what does that even mean in the first place? Having a life that other people look at and are jealous of? Or crafting a wholesome life that we ourselves are proud of? Becoming a person that you yourself really admire and all these little tiny rich moments that come from choosing for yourself what you care about. Even if you get to that pinnacle of success, your life is still gonna look boring in many ways and similar to what it is now. You'll still have to do dumb stuff, you know, like, I don't know, find a parking spot when you're late to a meeting. You'll still brush your teeth in the morning 
I hope. <laughs> or keep running back to the fridge over and over again because your snacks are still just not quite good enough. Our whole life is just a series of todays. You know, regular days just like this one, right, right now when I'm filming this, or when you're watching this, when you realize that our lives could end any day, we see that our fixation on the future is robbing us of right now. So in one way, you can make the argument that the message of this video is to shoot down the idea of a dream life. And it sounds kind of disappointing and depressing, but the message I really want to try to convey here is the flip side of that. And that message is that when we think about the fact that our lives are going to end one day, that gives us permission to actually enjoy the mundane, to enjoy the stuff we have now. Even though it doesn't look like what we think our dream life is going to look like, we can choose to enjoy it just as much. And so there's one thing I want to leave you all with, and it's a quote from The Little Prince. I know some of you might know this book, but if you haven't, it's a book and also a movie that I revisit quite often whenever I need a reminder of all this. People where you live, the little prince said, grow 5,000 roses in one garden, and yet they do not find what they're looking for. And yet what they are looking for could be found in a single rose or a little water. And so I try to remind myself of this every day now. Whenever I brush my teeth at night, I remind myself that this could have been my last day. And when my last day does inevitably arrive, it's probably gonna look in many ways very similar to this mundane day that I just had. And when I think about it that way, it gives me a moment to really remember and appreciate all the little tiny things that I can be grateful for about today. The little tiny munches and nibbles that I wouldn't have otherwise noticed or gotten to savor as I was so fixated on that dessert. And so I savor that as a reminder that I'm not waiting for my life to start. It's already here. So take a second today to do something mundane and give yourself permission to actually enjoy the heck out of it. You know, your life will never be like the movies. But the good news is it doesn't have to be. All right, so this video is sponsored by Okay, just kidding. It's not sponsored. I'm not that cool yet. <laughs> uh, but I did want to pop in here again really quick to ask you all a favor, um, if I may do so. So as I create more content here on this channel, I'm realizing that the underlying theme that's emerging is that of building an intentional life. And at the core of that is this question that each of us must face, which is that of what is my life purpose? And if you prefer its equally scary cousin, what is my passion? And so for me personally speaking, this used to keep me up at night for years because I felt very, very ill-equipped, uh, hopeless and lost when it came to something of such, um, with so much at stake, you know, your life you're talking about. And from your responses to these polls that I put on YouTube and Instagram, it seems like a lot of you seem to feel the same way. And so I was thinking of creating some sort of resource for you all, probably some kind of online course of some sort to walk you through the most helpful ways that I found of approaching this big scary question. Because after learning about this and reading about it and thinking about it over and over and over again from as many places as I could over the years, I feel like I've come across and collected so many interesting insights and angles from many of the top experts in their fields, thinkers from all over the world that have approached this and added color to the different sections of how to handle such a big question. And it's something that if I could go back in time and hand to my past self, I feel like it's something that would be so valuable that I would have wanted so bad back then. And so if this applies to you at all, um, I wanted to get a sense of whether or not this would be valuable to you guys, or if it's just me just kind of thinking here in my head, you know, daydreaming. And so if you resonate or feel like any of this might interest you, please consider clicking on the survey that I made. Even if you already responded to the polls, I would really love to hear your more in-depth feedback on this survey. Anyways, that's, that's basically it. 
that went on for a lot longer than I thought it would. But yeah, thanks so much for even considering taking the time to do that. Anyways, back to the video. <laughs> All right, friends, hope you're doing awesome. Sending much love and the biggest hugs again as, as possible. That doesn't make sense. Biggest hugs as possible. Oh, I guess. Anyways, I am really tired. <laughs> uh, Come here. Oh. I'm gonna keep doing that. I still think it's kind of weird, but I love you all and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>